Welcome to the new video in this electrical engineering course. In previous video, we had discussed different type of electrical sources. In this video, we will be discussing basic rules which will be helpful to us either in simplification of the circuit or in the calculations. So these basic rules will include source transformation, voltage division rule, current division rule. Source transformation will lead to the simplification in the circuit and definitely it will help us in the analysis of circuit. Voltage division and current division rule, they will be helpful in the calculations for the voltage and current respectively. So I will discuss them one by one starting with the source transformation. Source transformation means we can change a practical voltage source into a practical current source and vice versa. So practical voltage source consists of a voltage source, an ideal voltage source in series with the internal resistance R. And its terminals are AB. So according to source transformation, we can change this voltage source to current source the negative terminal will be replaced by tail of the arrow while the positive terminal will be replaced by arrow head means this will be the direction of current because of the source then the internal resistance it will be connected in parallel with the current source and here we will have terminals AB the amount of current supplied by the source I will be equal to V upon R so if, if we feel that it's more convenient to solve the problem if we have a current source in the circuit then we can apply this rule to change a practical voltage source into practical current source similarly we can change a practical current source into practical voltage source so practical current source consists of an ideal current source in series in parallel with the resistance it can be changed to a practical voltage source where we have to connect the internal resistance in series with the voltage source the arrow head will be replaced by positive terminal arrow tail will be replaced by negative terminal the voltage supplied by the source will be equal to current into its internal resistance. So this rule will lead to the simplification in the circuit if it is required. Then we have second rule which will be helpful in calculations is voltage division rule voltage division rule is applicable to series circuits where we have number of resistances are connected in series let's say we have n number of resistances 
connected in series and we know the voltage across their series combination let's say that is v if you want to calculate voltage across any of the resistance like v1 across resistance r1 v2 across resistance r2 pn across resistance rn it can be found by using formula vn will be equal to i into rn where i is the current in the series circuit so now if we find out that what is this current i it will be equal to v upon r1 plus r2 so on up to rn so what we can say that vn that is equal to v into rn upon r1 plus r2 so on up to rn so what voltage division rule says that voltage across any resistance is equals to source voltage into that the value of that resistance divided by sum of all the resistances which are connected in series next rule which will help us is current division rule current division rule is applicable when resistances are connected in parallel since current remains same in series circuit and it will get divided in parallel circuits so i will start it with the combination of two resistances if we have two resistances r1 r2 they are connected in parallel let's say we have a current source connected over here and its value is i now this i current is entering over here and it is getting divided into two parts i1 and i2 their value will be decided by the <coughs> values of two resistances so current i1 it will be equal to i into r2 upon r1 plus r2 So basically what we say over here that current in any branch is equals to source current that is current i into opposite branch resistance since we are finding out the current through r1 so r2 forms the opposite branch into r2 and in denominator its resistance of the branch through which we are finding out the current that is r1 plus resistance of opposite branch that is r2 similarly we can find out the value of i2 source current into opposite branch resistance that is r1 in denominator r2 plus r1 so this is simple when we have only two resistances in parallel but if we have many resistances connected in parallel r1 r2 so on up to rn we know that here the current entering is i and this one is leaving this parallel combination current through r1 is i1 current through r2 is i2 and current through in is rn so current i1 it will be equal to i into parallel combination of r2 r3 and so on and rn and in denominator r1 plus 
parallel combination of R2, R3, so on, up to Rn. <coughs> now this is because R1 is a branch through which we are finding out current. The rest of the branches which are connected in parallel starting from R2 till Rn, they form the opposite branch. So we need to find out their equivalent resistance and as all of them are connected in parallel, so here we have their parallel combination. Similarly, we can write for R I2. We want to write for I2, then it will be I into, now opposite branch will have all the resistances in parallel except R2. So it will be R1 in parallel with R3, in parallel with R4, R2, Rn. And in denominator R2 plus R1 in parallel with R3, so on to Rn. Similarly, you can find out the current in all the branches in which you want to find. So we can write I in as I into R1 in parallel with R2 in parallel with R3 up to r n minus 1 and in denominator we will have r n plus parallel combination of remaining resistances under r n minus 1. So these rules will help us in solving the problems related to various theorems. In next video I will discuss Kirchhoff's laws